welcome back to my channel. So yesterday I posted a video called The Least Creative Dolls American Girl Has Ever Made and I had a lot of fun with it so I decided today to make the most creative dolls that AG has ever made. So this version, you know, I think it's gonna be a lot of fun because while it's so easy to get caught up in the fact that AG has kind of done the same thing a lot of times and like kind of recreated the same dolls over and over again, I think it's easy to kind of gloss over the fact that there have been some dolls that are so unique and so beautiful and have had so much time and effort put into them and those are the dolls that I really want to spotlight today because there are so many of them, so many dolls that I personally own that I just adore and I think they're so unique and beautiful and so those are the dolls today that I really want to shine a spotlight on. So if you guys don't feel these dolls are super unique, you know, it's all a matter of opinion. I'm sure some of these dolls you guys are going to be like, but there's this, this, and this doll. But to me, these are the original dolls that looked like this. This is like groundbreaking time for American Girl. So even if there is currently a doll that looks like them, it might be like the first version of this doll or something. So that's kind of where I'm going with it today. But I'm going to stop rambling on and we're going to go ahead and get into today's video. The very first doll we're going to be looking at today is Nanea. So Nanea is a historical character from 1941 in Hawaii. And while I feel like a lot of people don't necessarily find Nanea to be incredibly unique because of the fact that we've already had a Hawaiian doll, we've also had a World War II doll, um, but I do because the first time I saw her, I didn't even really realize she was an American Girl doll at first. I thought her new face mold, it didn't quite look like anything I had seen before, and to me, that makes her incredibly unique, and so I had to put her in here. It took me a long time to finally get her because I just... I don't know, she was always kind of like third or fourth on my list, but once I got her and I saw her stunning eye makeup and her unique eyebrows, her eye color and her complexion and her lip color, her hair, like literally everything about this doll I find so stunning and unique and you know, I feel like she's something that American Girl really had to think about and for that reason I put her on this list. The next doll I find incredibly unique is none other than Kaya. So Kaya is another historical doll that was created years and years ago, but the coolest thing about her is that she is so incredibly unique. And up until Logan, no one else had ever had her face mold, no one else ever looked like her, and still, even with Logan, she's incredibly unique, she doesn't look anything like him, and I find it so interesting. Especially because American Girl put so much research into this doll, like years and years and years of research to decide what she was going to be, what she was going to look like, what her story was going to be and like the details to her collection. I think that's the coolest thing ever. And I think she's so beautiful. And something that I guess really stands out in a collection because, well, you know, I would say a lot of the dolls, you can kind of say, oh, probably didn't take them that long to create her. But with Kaya, it's undeniable that they took a lot of time and effort and really analyzed her culture and made sure that she was a stunning collector worthy doll. So Kaya in my book is 100% unique and one of the most unique dolls American Girl has ever made and probably ever will. Okay guys, so when I started this video I had no idea it would turn into a historical doll appreciation video, but I kind of like it so here we are. This is Addie, I'm sure you all know her, she's stunning, and anyone who owns an Addie can vouch for me when I say she is such an integral part of my collection. She is gorgeous, she's breathtaking, she is the one that your eye is drawn to almost immediately along with Kaya and a couple other ones that I'll talk about in a little bit, but she is so unique to me and I feel like part of that is because she was the original Addie mold. She is the original Addie, she has been around since 1993, like this doll is timeless, she's stunning, she's been around for that long for a reason, the reason being that anyone who owns her is completely obsessed with her and I know there are other Addie molds now and that she's kind of become like a different kind of doll now, but at the end of the day she was the start of it. The next doll I'm showing is shocker not a historical but this is Danny she's my truly me number 49 and I know that not everyone is gonna say oh she's super unique but to me she is and the reason why is because she was beautiful enough and different enough for me to really be drawn to American Girl again I haven't looked at AG I really hadn't cared too much I walked by a store one day when I was 12 and I saw her and I hadn't thought about dolls in like five years at that point and when I saw her I knew I needed to have her so I actually went in the store and wanted to buy her like that day. That's how beautiful this doll is, how unique she is, and I personally don't think there are any other dolls that look just like Danny. and I just think that's so cool because she is such a beautiful doll, and I love the fact that not a ton of people have her, and that she is kind of a doll that 
kind of gets overlooked at times, but at the time when she came out, she was the doll that everyone wanted. Like, I mean, everyone had her. She was like the 55 of 2010. The next doll we'll be talking about should be so obvious to anyone who watches my channel. It's insane, but this is Kanani. So Kanani um, was the first doll that I ever went to a Girl of the Year release for. I went when I was, I want to say I was 13, and she was like the prettiest doll I'd ever seen. To this day, I find Kanani to be the most unique doll American Girl has created in my lifetime, and maybe not because Kaya, but other than that, I feel like in the time that I remember AG, Kanani has been the most creative doll. And why I say that is because I vividly remember the day she came out, the day the leaks came out, everyone was freaking out about her because up until then, there really hadn't been many other Jess molds. And to top that off, no one had ever been t from Hawaii, no one had ever had such long hair, no one had used the Jess mold with a tan complexion, and she had never had hazel eyes. So everyone, I mean everyone, was freaking out about this doll. Like she was flying off the shelves, I remember it so vividly. It was insane, and the store was packed, and I don't think I'll ever experience anything quite like that. So Kanani, I mean just to me, and to everyone else, I feel like she is just one of those dolls that everyone kind of wants, and if you don't want her, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, I she's my favorite, so. Okay, so I feel like if there's any doll on this list people are going to really disagree with me on, it's Blair. But I really want to talk about this for a minute. So, the number one thing why I have Blair in this list is because of her skin tone. So, Blair is the first doll to have this super pale skin tone. And I love that because I've always had a really pale skin. And when I was a kid and I had all these dolls, I always felt like, you know, I'm a lot paler than even my light skin dolls. But even more than that, it just means that they're doing more skin tones and they're adding more options. And I think that's so important, especially to the Create Your Own line and Truly Me line, because honestly, I feel like the more dolls with different options we can get, like the closer we are to kind of accepting that everyone is different and everyone's unique and every skin tone, every eye color, every hair color, every hair texture, like they're all unique and great and dolls can look gorgeous with any of it, any combination, and I just think that's so cool. So the fact that Blair has a brand new skin tone, I just love that. So here's our first Sonali mold of the day. This is Truly Me number 62. Her name's Eden in my collection, and I think she's super unique. I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that her exact uh, skin tone and face shape and hair and eye color have never been used together in combination. A uh, few of those have been interchangeably used, but not exactly like her, and I think it's so beautiful. I think her skin tone with her eye color and just the uniqueness of it. She retired very, very quickly. She should have been around for a lot longer, but because she isn't, so many people wish they could get her. So many people wish that they had been around or collecting at the same time that she was out because she does really stand out in a collection. And I think that speaks volumes about American Girl. I can't tell you how many Create Your Owns I've seen that look just like her because people literally could not get her. So they made a Create Your Own to look like her. That's how incredibly unique and beautiful this doll is. So I think 62 is just stunning and I love how unique she is. And I think AG did a phenomenal job with her. I just wish they had seen it. They had seen how well they had done with her, so they would have kept her around longer. So this is Caroline, and the reason why I find Caroline to be so unique is because of her eye color, her hair color, and her eyebrow combination. I feel like she, at the time of release and still to this day, there aren't really too many dolls that look similar to her, and I feel like the biggest difference for her is obviously her really vibrant aquamarine eyes and her really light hair. I think it's so pretty. It's such a good combination. And even though she is a classic mold, I still feel like she's one of those dolls that's highly sought after, especially one of the earlier versions of her. So I think she's beautiful and very unique. And I think her story was really cool. And again, similar to some other dolls I've talked about in the historical and truly me line, I feel like they retired her way too soon and not a lot of people had a chance to get her. And I feel like even when she was available, I remember it being so funny because I would go to the store and she would be flying off the shelves. Like no one no one even knew she would be retiring quickly. No one had any idea. She was like a fairly new doll at the time and she was the only doll you'd seen. Like I remember it being just probably a month or two after the latest girl of the year had been released and she was the doll that everyone was going for. So I think that's really cool and that to me is like just a testament of how pretty and detailed and just unique at the time she was. 
And the final doll I want to touch on today is Cecile. Now I'm kind of hesitant to have her in here because of Sonali and because of Truly Me number 46 slash Gabriella, who do have similarities to her, but I find her super unique because at the time, she was the only historical doll to have any resemblance to this at all. I love her dark skin tone with her eye color and I love her hair. At the time of release, she was pretty unique and I still find her to be really beautiful and stunning and unique. All right guys, well that's all I have for today. Make sure if you haven't already to subscribe and join the family leave a comment down below and make sure to press that big thumbs up button if you enjoyed today's video and I will see you guys all in the next one bye guys